Hi, my name's Casey, and welcome to Decoding Twine, Episode 1, a series where we explore making interactive fiction through the use of the program Twine, working through learning to code in this program in an undaunting, friendly manner, using simple language across the board. As a footnote, this series will be focused primarily on the sugarcube format, as that's what I'm most experienced in and have my knowledge based on. This episode will be focusing on the very basics of Twine. Installation, starting a new project, switching formats, passages, links, and variables. First, we're going to install Twine off of twinery.org. It is possible to use the program in the browser, but I'd highly recommend downloading the desktop app to keep all of your work safe and secure. You're going to click the link to the left, which will take you to GitHub. GitHub is a super useful site that we'll cover later on in the series, but admittedly, it can be a lot to look at, at first, especially if you're new to coding. So for our purposes, we're going to keep things simple and look under the asset files that applies to our operating system. Windows users, you'll download the Windows, Mac will be using Mac OS, and Linux users will be using the Linux files. Personally, I use Windows, so I'm going to download the windows.exe. Now that we've installed Twine, we're going to open the program and open a new project. Once the program is installed and ready to go, you're going to go to the program and start a new project. That's done by clicking New and entering a title of my project. What I'm going to call this first project is Casey's Project. Now that I've opened my new story, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over my story format from Harlow to Shakercube. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to go up to the Story tab, and then I'm going to click the Details tab. Over here, it says my, the title of my project, Casey's Project, and then it says Story Format. I've already switched over to Sugarcube, Sugarcube 2.36.1. Originally, it's going to be one of the Harlows, but it's really important that we click down to the most recent version of Sugarcube. First, let's cover passages and links. These are what hold the content of your story. They hold, passages hold your main body of text. Now, links are what connect each passage to one another in your story. Think of passages as pages in your Choose Your Own Adventure novel, and links as the choices that tell you in the program what page to flip to. Now that you've opened a project, you're going to be faced with a blank passage real quick right here. Let's click on it to explore further. Passages have titles and bodies. A passage title is, you guessed it, what your passage is called. This will not show up in game, but I'd recommend naming your passages something bland in case code divers hop in and look at your code. Unless you want them to find something embarrassing in your titles, keep your name and convention simple. Right now, this passage is entitled Untitled Passage, so let's rename it by clicking Rename and typing something else. For now, I've just renamed my passage to 1. Next, your body is the content of the passage itself. This is what will show up in the game and contain links. I'm going to fill up my body with something simple. Now that we have content in our title and body, why don't we test out the game? So I'm going to exit out of this passage by clicking X, and don't worry, it is going to save it. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go to Build, and we're going to click Play. Right now, this is taking me to my text game so far. This is what it would look like when you played. So far, we do not see a title, no one to be seen, but we do see what we typed out. This is my body text. Let's keep going. Now that we're back in the Twine Builder, let's talk about links and create a few. Links are what tie all of Twine together across the formats. And in Sugarcube, you can style them a series of ways, connecting one passage to the next. The easiest way is to include a link that looks like this. This is a link that will appear as the word link in game, and will take you to the next passage entitled link. For this route, it is necessary to wrap your link in two sets of brackets, or what look like these little guys right here. These will actually make the link function as a link. And as you can see below, it's created a new passage already down here entitled link. Let's test out the game to see what it looks like. Let's click the link and it's going to take us to a blank passage because we haven't typed anything in there. By typing your links out like this, it's another approach you could take to link making. Creating a link that says next, but taking the player to the passage entitled link. 
for beginners, I want you to think left is what the player will see and right is what you, the developer, will see behind the scenes. Let's test it out and see what it looks like in game. As you can see here, we have our link and our next links that will take us both to the same place, but next is displayed differently than the link. Let's click on next. Now that we understand the basics of passages and link making, let's talk about variables. Variables are an incredibly useful tool that can be used to keep track of things throughout your game, whether that be your character's name, whether or not the player has visited a passage, the response to a question, or numerical stats. For our purposes, there are three types of variables. Boolean, which are basically true or false variables, numerical variables, and string variables, which are another term for variables that contain a word. The two macros that will be useful in reference to variables are set and if. First things first, when you have your list of variables ready, you're going to want to define them first in a story init passage. This is the first passage that will run in your game. You won't see it in the game as it's played, but it does get run in the background behind everything else. By setting your variables ahead of time in the story init passage and modifying them later, it allows for a smoother run through of the game that eliminates problems further down the line. You can, of course, define your variables as your game progresses in an individual passage, but you might run into trouble later down the line. So let's set up your variables in a story init passage here. To create my story init passage, I'm going to first go up to passage and click new. From there, I'm going to click on the passage, click rename, and label it story init as it's typed out here. It's important to capitalize the S and the I or else it won't run properly in the game. So. Here I've typed out three pretend variables, a numerical variable, a Boolean variable, and a string variable. What this does is set my friendship points to zero, it sets my yes or no question to false or no, and it sets my eye color to null at the moment. Variables, whatever you call them, always have to be preceded by a dollar sign for them to function in game. And you can format the set macro a number of different ways. For example, here I've set my numerical variable with a two. I can also type it out and make it look something like this. Here I've used two equal signs to make it set to zero. This will function the same as using the two. Now, if I want those variables to appear in the text as the numbers or words that we set them to, all I'm going to do is type out that same variable friendship with the dollar sign in front of it. Now let's play the game and see what it looks like in text. Because I've set my friendship points to zero, it comes up as zero. And because I have my eye color as null right now, it comes up as zero in text. Now, moving on, if we want to alter those numerical values further down the line in a passage, we can do so in a number of ways. Whether that be adding, subtracting, dividing, or multiplying. For example, if I wanted to add one point to my friendship code, it would look like this. Set friendship plus equal one would enclose that with those brackets. Now I can change that in one to any number I want it to be, whether it be three, five, 23, anything you like. The same would apply for subtraction, but instead of that plus sign, I would do a, a subtraction symbol before the uh, equal sign. Same applies for multiplication with an asterisk, and same applies for division with a division symbol, or a slash, sorry. That is all you're gonna have to do to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Boolean variables are useful when an option has two outcomes, helpful for things like yes or no questions or passage visits. Setting those variables looks something like this. Set variable to true. Since I already have it set to false in my story in it, I want to alter it to something different, so that's why I set it to true. When setting the variable, it is not necessary to add quotations around the word true or false. This will mess up your work down the line if you don't continuously use those quotes again. So when you're setting Boolean variables, only put true or false in no quotations. String variables are helpful for options with more complex outcomes, things like multiple options, names, or character customization. To set my string variable, I set it like set variable to brown. Now it's important to include that word brown, blue, gray, whatever color I want to change my eye color to, I need to put it in quotations or it won't come up right in the game. Now that we understand how to set our variables, let's talk about setting variables with links. 
So moving forward, now that I have my defined variables and story in it, I want to change them when I'm in game. You could, of course, do this by setting them at the top of your passage in game, like I've done here. So looking something like set eye color to brown and then the content of my body. But another, sometimes more effective way to set them is with actual links. You can go about that a couple of ways. One is with the brackets method, and it looks something like this. Double brackets, blue line link to bracket, bracket, variable to quotation, blue quotation, double bracket. Using this method, it's important not to include the word set, simply skipping ahead to your variable and to what you're defining it as. The bracket method is great, but there's another method that you can also go about. This is simply another way to style how you type out your links. I like the brackets method, but it is all up to you. Less than symbol, less than symbol, link, quotation, gray, quotation, quotation, link to, quotation, greater than symbol, greater than symbol. So basically what this does is you'll see the first quotation gray as the link and the second quotation link two as the passage that we're headed to. Now we're, we're gonna set our variable by including the, the set macro in between our two links. So I did the set eye color to gray in between our opening link and our closing link. And then, like I said, it's really important to close our link with a slash and then the word link. Now let's test the game and see what it looks like. So in my first passage, I'm gonna click next. And because we set our eye color to brown before any of our body text, right now their eye color is brown. I'm feeling like I wanna make a character with gray eyes, so I'm gonna click gray. Now we see that their eye color has changed to gray. So the last thing we're gonna talk about today is if statements. Now if statements are really de now if statements are really easy to use, especially now that we know how to do set statements. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna enclose our word sentences in these little brackets, these little less than and greater than signs. We're gonna do we're gonna set it up just like we would set up a set statement, but instead of the word set, we're gonna put if. Then we're gonna put if variable instead of to, we're gonna say is. We can also do an equal sign, but I prefer the is method, so I'm gonna put is. Then in parentheses, I'm gonna say blue. Now, if my variable is set to blue, what the player is gonna see is their eyes are the color of the ocean. Now, blue isn't the only option that we have. We also have brown and gray. Well, I've only talked about gray so far, so we're gonna set up an else if statement. Now, this is basically to ensure anything else that isn't that initial if statement. So anything else thing that's gray. So I'm gonna put else if variable is gray in parentheses. And if their eye color is gray, it's gonna say their eyes are the color of steel. Now this is really important. What we need to do last is we need to enclose our if statement with those same brackets, a slash and the word if. If we do not enclose it, it will not come up in game and you'll just see a red error. Okay, so now let's play the game and see what it's like. We're gonna start with our first passage, hit next. Our eyes are brown. This time I'm gonna make our eyes blue. So now it says their eye color is blue. Their eyes are the color of the ocean. We're gonna backtrack real quick, see what happens when we click gray. It says their eye color is gray. Their eyes are the color of steel. And with that, that concludes our first episode of Decoding Twine. Like I said at the beginning, my name is Casey, and I'm happy to help with any questions or concerns anyone would have. I'm going to put down where you can find my projects and other different games and stuff that I create as I'm an interactive fiction author in the description below. I'd love to hear from you, and if you would like to see more of this content, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks!